elimination at the hands of Sweden, the U.S. women's soccer team is now being accused of putting political activism ahead of winning. Their run came to an end. Pause real quick. They're accusing them of that. Fox News is. As the team suffered its fastest ever exit from the World Cup stage. Now critics are calling out the women's national team for putting woke politics ahead of our country. Let's pause a second. You guys are accusing them of this. You guys are playing into the woke boogeyman. It's not people, it's y'all. With many pointing out the team's reluctance to sing for the national anthem. And Fox Sports analyst and former U.S. men's player Alex Ilasis says... <laughs> Out of the out of the depth these mother are when they're talking about this this happens so repeatedly over and over and over again all right they don't know anything about this subject yet they are the ones who insist no politics in sports yet when a political network delves into this <laughs> wonderful don't kill the messenger this u.s women's national team is polarizing Politics, causes, stances, and behavior have made this team unlikable to a portion of America. This team has built its brand and has derived its power from being the best and winning. If that goes away, they risk becoming irrelevant. This is also, pausing real quick, coming from a pro-DeSantis sort of guy in Alexi Lawless, where I asked him on Twitter, Alexi, what were the benefits of slavery? Michelle, so grateful that you're here today and so curious what your thoughts are on this. Well, you know what? I covered the the women's Olympic uh, soccer in 2012 in London and Manchester and all over. Let's pause. Did she just say Michelle? Is that what she said? Michelle, so grateful that you're here today and so curious. She did. <laughs> Who is this person? Who is this host who knows absolutely nothing, not only on the team, not only about Alexi Lawless, but also Michelle Tafoya? Brilliant. Well, you know what? I covered the, the women's Olympic uh, soccer in 2012 in London and Manchester and all over. And it was a very patriotic team. It was a very easy to cheer for team. My daughter is an avid soccer player, was waking up in the middle of the night for all of these games, but she really didn't appreciate that they wouldn't sing. Now, some people have said to me, now, it doesn't make them bad Americans for not singing. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, that's not the point. And I'm all about freedom of expression. This is a, a shot of Megan Rapino kneeling at one point. They need to learn the lessons that I saw up front that the NFL and the NBA learned. Oh, let's stop here for a second. The lessons that the NFL and NBA learned from someone who is a conspiratorial nut job at this point because she thought that she was going to see greener pastures helping a failed candidate in Minnesota, her home state, run for office, and then platform, at this point, conspiracy theorist, NBA Hall of Famer John Stockton, who says that, that tens of thousands of athletes are just dropping dead and yet when confronted with that, he had no answer for any of the names. He wouldn't list them. And that is when you go sort of anti-American on all of your fans, a lot of your fans are very patriotic and you're going to lose them. Let's pause for one more moment. I know I'm going back and forth here. It is not, first off, she starts her entire diatribe with, I am pro-free speech. And then she goes into how she's not pro-free speech. So which is is it like you you have the right to criticize however for someone to take a knee for rage against the machine at woodstock to burn the american flag those are all protected you can disagree with it but to call it anti-american we go back to the colin kaepernick protest where he said and nate boyer even said this is what we fought for it is the freedom of expression to say that it's anti-american for someone to take a silent knee is unpatriotic. That is the epitome of being un-American. I also love how these people are so bound by the Constitution. We are constitutionalists, the forefathers, the great people, even though the slave owners, the great people who drafted this great document. However, when I disagree with something, I don't follow those same bylines. It's very interesting to me. And not only is it the anthem stuff, I mean, 
you're there on that platform competing for the United States in the World Cup. It's not like you're on a pro team somewhere. You're competing for the United States of America. And Let's pause for a second. I like how she's now differentiating between the two when she went on The View and criticized Colin Kaepernick to the nth degree who did not play for the United States, played for a club team. And I think she laughed after that goal like you would after you get a sick kick in the gut. She missed. That goal missed. She wasn't laughing like this is funny. She was laughing like, oh, I, I, are you kidding me? This is sick. So I'll give her that. But that's about all I'll give her because she really has almost single-handedly brought the reputation of this team to where it is right now. And they, they better, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a cautionary tale. Oh, thank you. Good ending. So where did she bring them? Um, it wasn't just her. I see a lot of people not going after Crystal Dunn, not going after Alex Morgan, not going after Abby Wambach, not going after Midge Purse. What did they fight for? They fought for women's rights. They fought for equal pay. They took on the United States Soccer Federation, one of the most, if not the most powerful federation in all of world football. They protested. They made their voices heard. How I see this is the similarities to when Fox News and the entire right-wing media monster went after WNBA players because they wore in the WNBA bubble Vote Warnock. At the time, Raphael Warnock was polling at like 9%, I want to say. After that, and after they made their voices heard, and Sue Bird, Rapino's partner, gave an interview saying, this is just what we're about, this is what we like to do, Raphael Warnock went ahead of Kelly Leffler. And beat Kelly Leffler. They hate it because it is influential. They hate it because they are changing minds every day. That is the epitome of all of this criticism. And for Michelle Tafoya to be a once respected journalist wading into these waters, and she's basically a libertarian at this point, is sickening. Because we now know where she stands, and I question almost every single report she gave when she is covering a sport that is about 75% black. No, Kaylee, it's, it's a luxury to play a sport for a living. And many critics have argued, you know, this is a player who got the presidential medal for being an, an activist, allegedly for LGBTQ rights and the like. But the That is not a lead, she is. So for someone that has enjoyed the benefits of this country, for them to not stand for the anti- All right, let's stop. It's the same recycled talking points with Fox News over and over and over again. Oh, they protest. They hate America. America bad. Meanwhile, did you know Megan Rapinoe comes from a military family? Did you know that she shouted out her military uh, member uh, family members when she was doing this? Did you know that Colin Kaepernick also comes from a military family and also said that he is doing this for the veterans who are mistreated when they come back from war? This is not about being anti-American. It is about dissent being patriotic, dissent being uncomfortable. Calling out the establishment is how we have better days for Americans. Doing what Megan Rapinoe is doing is, as the saying goes, as American as apple pie. And these people who want to cancel democracy, uh, are okay with January 6th, and install a fascist, are the most anti-American people that we have. This is not a news network. This is a propaganda fascist network that continues to go after those who are trying to make a change for the best. We don't need to hear any more of this. You already know where this is going. It's the same thing that they have said over and over and over again.